The Supreme Court of India had laid down in case that there is a conflict between the Articles of Association and the Shareholders Agreement, it's the company's articles that would prevail. However, the Delhi High Court judgment earlier this year only has broadened the scope of this very principle and has even covered shareholders' rights. Rukmani Rao tells us more. The conflict between shareholders' agreement versus articles of association has been a contentious issue. But the recent interim judgment of the Delhi High Court in the World Phone India case has opened a new dimension of debate. The Delhi High Court interprets Section 9 of the Companies Act which deals with Act overriding articles and memorandum of the company. However, while doing so, the Delhi High Court says, and I quote, all that Section 9 states is that clauses in the agreement that are repugnant to the Act shall be void. This does not mean that clauses in the agreement which are not repugnant to the Act would be enforceable, notwithstanding that they are not incorporated in the Articles of Association. Experts believe with this the Delhi High Court has extended the scope of principle laid down by the Supreme Court in case of V.B. Rangaraj in 1992 which said that the Articles of Association overrides the shareholders' agreement. This is quite different because here you are talking about certain inherent management rights which an investor would need in order to protect the investment that is made in in the company. So this kind of extension of the Rangaraj principle, if I were to call it that, to any kind of rights, minority rights, investor rights, however we may call them, you know, to the concept that everything must be enshrined in the articles is where now the position has become a lot more broad based or the application has become a lot more broad based than previously. But the bigger concern is on the remedy available for an aggrieved shareholder, which is now perhaps limited. The question which I think, you know, most of these judgments which have, uh, you know, which have you know, added to the confusion as you called it, I, the, the problem is that they have not addressed the issue of what happens to the other provisions of the SHA if the company is a party to the SHA, right? And I think on that aspect, um, even from the observation in Vodafone and if we see uh, common law uh, 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 practice in this uh, area, it is very clear that you will have a remedy under contract law for breach of contract. You can't say that the provisions of the shareholders agreement, if they are not included in the articles, are not binding at all. They may not be binding as a matter of um, you know, uh, companies act and the articles of association. The difference is that if it is part of the Articles of Association, then anybody can question and say that the uh, action is void ab initio because you don't have the power to do it in the first place or you don't have the power to do it properly in the first place. Whereas if it's, in, uh, if it's a provision of a contract that you have signed, then it only becomes a breach of contract. But with these interpretations now by the courts, Corporate lawyers are of the view that it has now become a norm that provisions of shareholders' agreement are incorporated in the Articles of Association and scope of conflict is reduced to the minimum to protect shareholders' rights. Well, with that, we have come to the end of this episode. Do send us your feedback on the email ID and follow us on Twitter. Both details are there on your screen right now. We will be back with more news and views from the legal corridors. Thank you so much for watching.